Hi, I'm Coach Patrick. I'm one of the coaches at Chiron Applied Health and Performance and one of the owners. Today, I want to teach you about your full morning routine or your CARS, Controlled Articular Rotation routine, where we go from head all the way to our toes. You're obviously not going to be able to see my toes in this particular video, but if you want to go through more detail, there is a independent toe CARS video. Uh, so it all starts with a little bit of tension. With that, with that, what I mean is squeezing your quads, squeezing your glutes, getting yourself grounded, taking a little sip of air, feeling that little stretch sensation in your abs, and then kind of bracing like you're going to get tickled, just enough so that you're aware if your body wants to shift side to side. Um, I'll coach you through all of it so you can just kind of follow along uh, from beginning to end, okay? So creating that tension, squeezing quads, glutes, a little bit through the core. We're going to take our hands down. You can also do this squeezing rolled up socks or tennis balls if you've got them. So from here, we're going to work through our neck. We're going to pull down into cervical flexion, right? That's making sure we're not just dumping. Imagine trying to gently touch your collarbone with your chin, okay? From here, we're going to rotate to our left as far as you can. You're gonna tilt back and try to find the left armpit, the back of it, up and over the top, to the right, tilt forward, find center. From there, you're gonna reverse all the way to the right, tilting back, up and over the top, around, back to center. Okay, we're gonna do two more reps with that. Each time, see if you can squeak out a tiny bit more range of motion, but really with the, the big part of this is making sure that wherever we're moving, it's pain-free. I don't want you to be moving into pinchiness. If you need to feel a big stretch on one side of your neck, the opening side, that's great. If you feel a restriction or a pinch on the closing side of your neck or closing side of any joint, uh, we wanna make sure that we go around that spot, okay? So again, we're gonna create that tension. We're gonna do two more reps. All the way to the left. Tilt back up and over the top. Trying to keep your mouth closed as you do this. Obviously, I'm talking. This makes it a lot harder to keep my mouth closed so that you guys can hear me. One more time. We want to be aware of anything that our body is doing to help us do this is really when we say neck we want neck and only neck nothing else should contribute to this so now we move on to our spine so we're looking at spine from base of the neck down to low back okay so right about here with that i want to take the feet just a little bit wider and make sure that we are grounded so if you if you imagine you got a hot grill all the way around you so no matter which direction you go with your hips you'll feel a little singe we don't want any singe okay so we don't want butt pooching out back behind us we're going to cross our arms over our chest we're going to sip that little bit of air so we feel that tension building in our core slowly start to flex forward keeping your hips right underneath you my hips should not be getting any closer to the line rotate to our left Extending back as far as you can into the left. Extending back towards the center, around to the right, keeping the hips underneath you, all the way around, and reset. Give myself a little tension check. Rotate to the right. Extending back, all the way around to the left. And as you do this, in terms of tension, if a 10 out of 10 was like, full purple head veins popping out we're looking at like a three for your morning routine so i'm just going to show you from the side to the left all the way back through so you can see in this spot i've got a nice long spine i'm not just flexing through the one spot of my spine that works really well I'm trying to control every single segment same thing here we're flexed but we're not dropping our head towards the floor necessarily to the right flex into that right side extending back we don't want our head to be doing the driving to the left around 
and to center. Awesome. <clears throat> so we just covered neck and spine. We're going to go on to shoulder blades, and we're going to do these two at the same time. So this is kind of how we would do it in kin stretch, unless we were going to be working shoulder blades specifically. So arms are going to be out at about a 45 degree angle. Like you're going to hug the world's biggest teddy bear, but it's actually like a porcupine. So you, every time you hug in, you're going to get poked. We don't want to get poked. Pull the shoulder blades up towards your ears. Pull them back towards your spine. Imagine you're pinching a pencil between your shoulder blades. Slide the shoulder blades down. Punch them forward. Pull them up towards your ears. Slide them back. Drive it down. Punch them forward. Up. Back. Down. Forward. Good. Three reps. That's all it is. So from here, we're going to take it into our shoulder. So separating shoulder blade from shoulder. They obviously have an impact. They obviously work together a ton. We want to separate them as much as we can for the purpose of exploring and maintaining that joint health. So from here, we're opening up the armpit. So on this side, like I'm trying to expose the inside of my arm. I'm going to now put my hand right here on my ribs, and I'm going to drive that arm across my body as far as I can. Start to work your way up, bicep to ear-ish. Uh, what I want you to be aware of in this spot is not overextending through your ribs, just going up as high as you can before you feel anything. On the Dump the water bottle out, and we do that from the shoulder joint, all the way around, reaching as far back behind us as we can, landing at our hip with our pinky forward, thumb back, palm is out, okay? So then from there, we reach straight back. We externally rotate all the way up and try to pass through that same image of motion that we were just in, okay? So we're gonna do that again. Remember, pain-free range of motion. Dump the water bottle, reaching back. Logo is still facing you. My bow bell here is still facing you. You can see it clearly the whole time. So even though I'm reaching for as far back behind me as I can, you're not seeing me do this, right? Helping to isolate that shoulder joint as much as we can, okay? And then we're gonna go to the other side, three reps. When this is all said and done and you don't need the video to guide you through this anymore, you can always come back to it. But as you do this, as you get better at it, it should only take you about six and a half minutes to get through the whole thing. This video might take you a little bit longer just because we're trying to do a step-by-step and I'm trying to give you the things that I can give you to help you accomplish this as successfully as possible. So notice I'm not flying through this, but I'm not like grunting, groaning. You can hear me speaking clearly the whole time. There are other videos out there that will be on our channel uh, where we will demonstrate like levels of cars and how you can build even more attention into them. But for the time being, all we're looking to do is teach you the morning routine. So that three out of 10 intensity. So from here, we're gonna work into elbows and we're gonna do these together at the same time. Now, instead of opening up the armpits, we're gonna try to keep the sweat in our armpits as if somebody was gonna try to tickle us, right? So keeping those armpits tight, externally rotating through the elbows, start to flex. So with this, this is probably the one to feel the tension the most easy, easiest. Uh, spinning the palms over and then drive down. Supinate, which is opening the palms up towards the camera. We're going to bring those palms up towards us, tilting the thumbs out, pinkies in as much as we possibly can. From there, we're going to pronate. So now knuckles are up, palms are down. Good. One more rep. Oh, this is one that uh, if you play tennis a lot, if you work at your your dead a lot. Uh, wrists and elbows are going to be two places where you can get really easy irritation when you go and you know do the weekend warrior thing, where you play golf a ton or play tennis or paddle sports, uh, where you get a lot of this, right? These guys tend to get angry. Elbow cars are a really nice way to alleviate some of that tension. So now on to wrists. So if I were to do one wrist at a time, I'm going to block here. I'm going to pull into wrist extension, tilt pinky side, pull up, so now pinky is in towards me, thumb is up. I'm going to tilt thumb side. Remember, there's a huge range of motion. 
and I'm gonna come down. So as we do this together, right? Imagine that steaming hot cup of coffee on your forearm. What you notice is when I was holding my wrist, I wasn't doing this, right? I was just going through this nice big range of motion with my wrists and only my wrists, okay? So pinky side, pull into wrist extension, thumb side, wrist flexion. Pinky side, pull extension, thumb side, wrist flexion. We can also reverse that, thumb side, wrist extension, pinky side, wrist flexion, and we can just keep working through that big range of motion. This might feel really nice, especially if you're planning on, you know, sitting laptop standing desk, trackpad, or mouse. Like a lot of this, where we're kind of in those Mr. Burns hands, um, we want to make sure that we're getting wrist extension through that as well. Okay, so moving on to hips. Okay, so hips are probably one of the biggest, most complex dance moves that we've got. Um, so break it down if you need to. And again, morning routine is not about being perfect. Morning routine is about signaling to your body that you still need this space. Okay, so we're going to take right leg across our body as far as we can. From there, we're going to pull up into like a hacky sack style position. With this, using something for balance, absolutely. I'd rather you be able to balance than so worried that you're getting tired that we're doing all kinds of craziness. So here, find neutral. Bring it a little bit higher if you can. Come out to like a Captain Morgan style or an open gate stance. Start to rotate ankle bone towards the ceiling. Okay, so notice my knee is starting to drop. That's totally fine. I'm internally rotating as far as I can and kicking back towards the wall behind me. Knees are going to come together. Knees going to go forward slightly. We're going to reverse. Lift that fire dog at the fire hydrant. Open gate. Find neutral. Bring that higher. Hacky sack. Drive the heel across your body. We're going to do that again two more times. Hacky sack. Neutral. Open gate. Ankle bone to ceiling. Fire hydrant. Knees together. Knee goes forward, drive straight back, try to feel for your glutes. Open up just a little bit to that dog at the fire hydrant. All the way through, open gate, neutral, hacky sack, drive across. Okay, we're gonna do the other side. Okay, bring that leg across, up into the hacky sack, find neutral, open the gate. Ankle bone to ceiling. This is the most crampy, uncomfortable part of this whole thing. You can see I just lost my balance a little bit. It happens. It happens to the best of us. Lift that dog at the fire, fire hydrant. Open gate. Neutral. Come across. And down. Good. One more time. Hacky sack. Neutral. Open gate. Ankle bone to the ceiling. Kick straight back. And forward. Drive that heel back, lift, open gate, neutral, hacky sack, down. Let's do one more rep only because I can't remember if I did two or three. We want to make sure, just as a baseline, I mean, it, it, honestly, if you get one in, one is better than nothing. Part of what we're trying to do with this morning routine is signaling that whatever mobility work we've done, whatever joint space we've worked to create, we are telling our body daily that we need that space. It also gives us an opportunity to tune in and find out if there is joint space being taken from us on a daily basis, where is that? <laughs> okay, so we've just finished our hips. We're gonna go into our knees. And knees are probably the least familiar rotation um, because most people don't actively ever try to rotate their knees. This actually plays a huge part in improving and maintaining the health of your joint capsule, especially if you are post-injury. So with your knee, the basic rotation is this guy. So this is your tibia. What we're trying to do is externally rotate and internally rotate. So if this is your first time doing knee cars, you can spend your time with this, right? Find that external rotation, internal rotation. The full knee car, like we're doing for our morning routine, is gonna look like this. So you can give yourself a little bit of a hug and then you're gonna externally rotate. We're gonna extend the leg as far as we can, internally rotate and pull back. If you can lock your knee out, stop just short of lockout, it's not gonna rotate it at a fully locked knee. Extend, 
internally rotate, flex. And what I, with this, one of the best things you can do as you're trying to rotate this is think more about rotating the heel. The toe is going to move, right? What we don't want is a lot of this happening while trying to rotate your knee. So externally rotate, extend, internally rotate, flex, and you can reverse, internally rotate, extend, externally rotate, flex. Let's go one more rep like that. Boom, down. Okay, and then we'll switch sides. Same thing, let's find that rotation. Pull the toe towards the shin, internally rotate, externally rotate. So heel goes out, heel goes in. Heel goes out, heel goes in. So now as the heel goes out, let's extend. Now let's internally rotate and pull. What we don't want is the hip to be doing all of this. We're trying knee and only knee. So the harder you hug here, you can even go for like a rear naked choke, which is some uh, Brazilian jiu-jitsu action. Here, up, internal, down, and then we'll reverse, internal, up, external, down, internal, up, external, down. Okay, knees, done knees. So onto ankles. Ankles, again, you can do this standing. So with your balance, implement. So you've probably done ankle circles at some point in time in your life. What we want to try to do though, as we do this, is make sure that we are focused on, again, the ankle and only the ankle and controlling every single square inch. So let's point the toe, pull the big toe in, start to pull up, trying to get the toes towards the shins, try to pop the balloon between your toe and your shin as much as you can. Ankle bone, excuse me, uh, big pinky toe goes out, drive down. So we're looking for this nice big rotation. The tension still applies here. So I'm still squeezing my quad, still trapping air, still squeezing my fist just gently, just enough to work ankle and only ankle. Good. And then we're gonna reverse ankle and only ankle. Good, big toe, pinky toe, gas pedal, big toe side, pop the balloon, pinky toe, down. Very nice, so those are head to ankles. So toes, I'm gonna bring the camera a little bit closer so you can see this because it is really important that you can move your toes independently of each other. Uh, it's something that you will find that the better your toes move independent of one another that they can relax a little bit more and do what they're supposed to do. So with this, what we're looking for initially is big toe all on its own. Okay, we're gonna do that three times. One, two, and three. Okay, then we're looking for the other four. Up, one, two, three. And now uh, all four or all five up, tap big toe alone. One two, three, and then all the other four in kind of a piano keys style movement. So we're all up, splay the toes as wide as you can, tap pinky all the way down to big toe, pull them all back up again, splay, pinky toe down, one after the other, one last time, boom, around. Okay, so you're gonna do that with both feet. So let's, I'll go through again with this foot so you guys can follow along. Sorry, big toe, one, two, three, other four, up, one, two, three, and everybody up, big toe, or excuse me, uh, yes, big toe, one, two, three, now all the other ones, splay and piano, up, splay and piano, and this will take time. You're gonna do the best that you can. But remember, if you're somebody who spent a lot of time on foot mobility, which are there are people out there who do this, the work that you put in will only be maintained if you tell your body daily that you need it. Sometimes even more than daily, depending on the shoes that you wear. So if you're somebody who really likes to wear high heels, totally fine. Just make sure, 
Like it can have an impact on the way that your feet work. So if you are somebody who really likes to wear high heels, take them off periodically and try to make sure that you are moving those toes as regularly as you can, because you've undoubtedly experience something that pulls the big toe in, it pulls the pinky toe in, the feet kind of feel compressed. So getting those feet to splay and spread a little bit more naturally is something that will help your foot function a ton. Thank you so much for following along with this. Uh, again, I am Coach Patrick from Chiron Applied Health and Performance. Um, if you like what you're seeing, I'm happy to help with any questions that you have, so leave them in the comments. Please like and subscribe. Check out our complimentary kin stretch classes that there are 16 classes up on our YouTube channel, more to come, um, as well as exercise tutorials. If you struggle with any of the cars in particular, there are individual videos for every single one. Okay, thank you so much.